Jimmy Buffett inspired Harrison Ford to do. They had a uh, Jimmy Buffett tribute concert the other night. A lot of people played, as you can imagine, played a lot of Jimmy Buffett music. And Harrison Ford was friends with him. And he told a story on stage about the crazy thing he never expected to do. Jimmy Buffett was a cool guy. I remember one day, some might say boozy lunch, (laughs) with Jimmy and Ed Bradley. It was Bradley's birthday. I saw both of them had earrings. (laughs) So right after lunch, I got my ear pierced. That's just how infectious Jimmy's coolness was. Infectious enough for a 40-year-old man to spontaneously get his f***ing ear pierced. It's Harrison Ford. I think he was... Sounding like a beat poet. Yeah. yeah. He, I, he, he should really just let it go there yeah. here in his old age. I'm glad he explained that because I have always wondered... Yeah. What? Yeah, How, why? Why did you? I remember that? when it happened too, because it was it like I mean, it stood out out, out of like, nowhere. Whoa. Out of yeah, and, and he was older than forty too. He, they they said you know they did the research on it, it was like 50, yeah. 55 when he got uh. pierced. And uh, Ed Bradley, I'd forgotten that, that Ed Bradley, who was yeah. one of the most visible CBS yeah. personalities at the time, had his ear pierced because yeah. yeah. he was on sixty Minutes. Yep. Yeah. And one night he just showed up on you yeah. know when you're like I'm Ed I'm Bradley. Ed Bradley. Wait a minute. <laughs> Ed? What have you done, Ed? I'm Morley. What in the... What? Ed? <laughs> right. They're looking over at each other. What? I the just clock like, is just tick, tick, ticking. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> guys, say, guys, say something. Say something. You're supposed to say who you are here. You're supposed to say I'm so-and-so. Yeah, Ed got his ear pierced, and that ends up... Had lunch with Jimmy Buffett along with Harrison Ford, and Harrison Ford's like... It was oh, a boozy lunch. I'm going to do it. I wonder... Uh, <laughs> I've seen Harrison Ford in movies and TV shows since. I don't know if he still has his ear pierced or not. He might. He's in his 80s. He might something. wear it when he's out with you know the lady, his wife on the town. He but might. He's 80s. I don't ever see it in a movie. Morgan Freeman got his ear pierced. You're right. Later. You know, You're right. He and, and Harrison Ford and Ed Bradley are the three that psh, ear pierce. Has your son ever expressed interest? Because so many young athletes do it now, and they're his role models. He's never said. No offense, it. I don't think it's you. Well, no, uh, uh, he's never said it. I don't. I don't know if he will. I, I would discourage it. You know, of course, me. you know me. I don't like anything, uh, any kind of abnormality or anything like that. <laughs> Not that that would be abnormal, I suppose, but I would discourage mm-hmm. that kind of thing. Uh, he may do it. You know, when he gets to be. I was going to say 18. He is. He's 19. So yeah, I, you have yeah. to be, I, you only have to, you don't even have to have a, I'm sure he could walk into any piercing place. I mean, they pierce little kids ears, but the parents have to be there for that. Yeah, right? you're right. You're right. So I, 18 or 21 by 18, I would think for a piercing. On your own? Probably. What's a tattoo? 18? I, I want to say yes, I, I but I don't know. That's probably right. He could probably go to the piercing pagoda right now. Yeah. And get a piercing if he wanted to. Go to but, Claire's, they'll do it. Yeah. He's not expressed an interest at least as of yet. Not to me. The other entertainment news, and this is a, this is an update now. Uh, Billy Joel, I'm sure you heard about this yesterday. <laughs> this is getting way more traction than it should. The disaster on CBS. <laughs> the, the the travesty <laughs> that unfolded at the Billy Joel concert, <laughs> which they promoted for weeks. They promoted it to the point that I literally recorded it. I didn't have any interest in it. I was like, all right, I'm recording this. And Billy Joel's concert, as you, I'm sure you know, was cut short by CBS. If you missed Hearing that, Piano Man. Piano Man. Like <laughs> the man's signature song, Piano Man. The I guess the masters ran late, and so this is how Piano Man ended. And the piano sounds like a bottle, and the microphone smells like a beer. Live from CBS 4, this is your news now. So, <laughs> Billy Joel fans were outraged. Two thirds of the country. <laughs> yeah, that's two thirds of the country that got that kind of treatment. And we, Billy Joel fans, were beside ourselves. What? We were beside ourselves. And so, this is a, unprecedented. CBS has said, all right. <laughs> We're going to re-air the whole thing on Friday night. Please stop calling. They're going to re-air all of it starting at 9 o'clock on Friday night, Eastern Time. Okay. If you want to see the concert, now you can record it or watch it live 
Friday night at 9 Eastern. A spokesperson said a timing error ended the concert special two minutes early for two-thirds of the country. <laughs> I'd do it again. Wow. Wouldn't that be something? <laughs> I'd wow. do it again on Friday. That would be hilarious. Yeah, now we're into an Andy Kaufman-style yeah. territory. Oh, man. If they did it again, oh, yeah. that would be spectacular. Mm-hmm. Wouldn't it? If they cut the thing <laughs> Just the exact same moment, yeah. the exact same <laughs> oh line. Oh, my God. That would be. Let's ju- go to your evening news. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what a moment that would be. The CBS would be like just lorded over. So, oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. We got you. We, we made you tune in. You again. know, Piano Man. Look what. Yeah, yeah, you've heard Piano Man before. Has Billy released a statement? I haven't heard anything from Billy on this. I bet Billy didn't care. He's probably like, I, yeah. don't, I don't know. They paid me to do it. That's it. He, uh, this is the way it's supposed to end, by the way. We have the actual ending because they have it on Paramount Plus. Okay. You can stream it. And the piano sounds like a carnival. Everybody. And the microphone sounds like a beer. And they sing at the bar and put bread in my jar. Say, man, what are you doing here? Ooh, la, la, la. Goosebumps. That's how it's done right yeah. there, isn't it? Although I know one man who might be walking away from that concert not happy. No. And that's Chris Kelly mm-hmm. because no. he didn't sing the no, end no. of the song, no. the ultimate verse. And you no. hate that. No, you're 100% wrong. Here's what I didn't. I hate John Mellencamp because I went to see a John Mellencamp show and he didn't sing Jack and Diane. He let us. He just turned the microphone and we all sang Jack and Diane. Billy Joel does every verse and then does an extra verse. Okay. I've seen Billy Joel too. And on the last extra verse, he turns to the audience okay. and we all sing it at the end. I mean, Billy Joel gives a heck of a show. I mean, Chris Jim's not a Billy Joel fan, Mm-mm. but uh, he works hard at his concert. And so I don't mind that at all. I love okay. singing along. What I didn't like about John Mellencamp was every song. It's like, you know, he, he, <laughs> John Mellencamp probably sang when so I saw him. He'd start with Little Diddy. And then we'd all go. That's exactly right. And we all go like, "Bow, Jack, and Diane. And I was sitting there. Two I'm, kids. Growing up in the heart. Like, it's like we were on. It's like we were auditioning or something. Sucking on a chili dog. <laughs> chili dog. And he's like, if you miss your cue, he'd get mad at you. And so I didn't appreciate that John Mellencamp made us sing probably 70% of the songs. Is it possible? I don't know the reasoning behind this. I mean, some people would say it's fun to be part of a community. Yes. Some. Not you. No, not me. No. Uh, because, you know, there's something about a concert that's only yes. unique to that night. Of course. But you could also argue that the man smokes 100 cigarettes a day. Maybe he doesn't have the lung capacity. I mean, it's probably to true. To belt out the songs. That's pro- I'm sure you're right about that. My whole point about John Mellencamp was if you can't belt out the songs, then don't have yeah. the concert where I paid $20 for parking. Okay. Mm. It was it was expensive. This was 15 years ago. I paid $20 for parking. <sighs> And he's singing I mean, every single song. He would sing like probably a third of it or less, and then just let us finish it. And I told my sister who I took. I said to my sister, R O C K. That's right. In the USA, <laughs> you know that's what that's, that's 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 how he did it. That's right. Now you may be right. It may be because of his very limited lung capacity. Yeah, he, he only has a third of the songs left. You know, he can't do it. But Billy Joel, I appreciate. That's the only song he does it on, and he goes the extra mile. Like, we saw Garth Brooks. True, yes. And uh, he'll let you sing, of course, some in Friends in Low Places, 
but he does the whole yeah. song. You know, he does extra, and I, I appreciate that. But Mellencamp, mm. not not again. Mm. You won't get me again. Now I didn't pay for the tickets. I was born in a yeah. small town. <laughs> yeah, I noticed you said I paid twenty dollars to park. Twenty dollars to park. <laughs> yeah, I paid twenty dollars to park. But Still I, holding on to that one. The drive was over an hour, and I don't want pe- people always come up to me and they say you're such a curmudgeon, you're such mm-hmm. a no fun. Because you don't want to sing along at concerts. I love singing along at concerts. I just think the artist should do more than a quarter of the song, which is what Mellencamp did. I mean, give me, if he even did 80% of the song and then the last verse we all sang Jack and Diane, I understand, but I didn't like that one bit. And I I figured you'd say that. Back to Billy Joel, too. The, um, we heard yesterday after the program, got a number of emails that, like you said, the Billy Joel show is, the concert is on Paramount Plus. Mm Mm-hmm. A number of people have said that the show was edited and it was not in the order that he did this. I wonder if the Paramount is the full thing or if that's just a two-hour That's a good question. CBS broadcast. I think it was just a CBS broadcast. And a lot of people said it was edited poorly and out of order. Mm-hmm. And they didn't like it. You know, They didn't like the fact that they had edited it like that. You wouldn't think, because how long is a Billy Joel show? Two and a half hours? May, I don't know. Maybe. You, you wouldn't think they'd have to cut that much out of it, would you? you know, I mean, you've got commercials so you probably have you had to build in what 30 minutes for that yeah i'd say so at you, pr- least you probably half. have to cut about an hour out of the concert yeah you know uh but a lot of people were complaining about the songs that they cut that they should have kept some that they didn't myrtle beach doug will weigh in on this about singing at concerts mb doug what do you have uh, hey guys, good morning. Myrtle Beach Doug here. Yes, um, I hope you're all having a wonderful morning. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, I can uh, completely agree with you, Kelly, mm-hmm. on the fact of when I'm at a concert, I want to see the band sing. Right. I mean, yeah, we'll do, you know, like a little chorus maybe here or there, but uh, I was at a Ozfest back in 1999. I mean, there were like six, seven bands on the main stage and like all the other bands around. Um, and Godsmack was like just coming out and they were super popular, still are. I don't know why, but uh, their egos hit the stage before their talent ever did. And at their biggest song, I'm like, okay, here it comes, here it comes. He would literally sing like two lyrics and then put the mic out to the audience. Yeah. And then sing two lyrics and put the mic out to the audience. I'm like, it was $5 per band for the main stage. I want my $5 back from Godsmack. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. You just got Godsmacked. Yes. We have a little Godsmack here. I'll tell you this. I want my $20 back for parking from John Mellingham. That's what I want. That went to the venue. That's, that's what I want. did not go in his pocket. I want, I, well, somebody owed me $20. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Myrtle Beach Duck. We are like-minded on this, oh. for sure. Thank you. Imagine if you got a chance to tell him that. He'd just, oh, he'd go off Oh, he'd you. own me. You know how. He'd, he'd roll up. you. Yeah. <laughs> He, he's, he's, a, he's an angry he man. He gets agitated. <laughs> yeah. I would never tell. Yeah. If you want $20, I'll give you $20 right now. <laughs> Rolls it up, throws it at you. If He'll I, beat you up and then toss 100 on you. Yeah. <laughs> Pee on me. If, if he were in here, I don't think Mr. I'd have. Mr. Mellencamp himself? I don't no. know if I'd have the guts to bring that you up. I don't, I don't no, think I no, would. No, no, no. I, I wouldn't do that. Um, but I'm with, I'm with Myrtle Beach Doug. I want them to sing most of it. Now, I do like singing along in the classics like uh, Piano Man or something like that. But I, I didn't like that. John Fogarty opened for Mellencamp and was great. I think Fogarty was better than Mellencamp, even though he was clearly... What'd you say? <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> I think you both are equally talented. <laughs> Your walls about to come crumbling down if you don't shut your mouth. <laughs>